Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Keep going. I know we yeah, have let's, yeah, let's, of the way through. Yeah, we're let's, yeah, let's get it in. Let's get it Simplifying, in. Simplifying, clarifying, and enforcing existing laws. Of the many opportunities to have impact in this area, the strongest example and the one entirely consistent with our messaging goals is the opportunity to substantially reduce gun, gun homicides in urban communities by cracking down on a small number of gun dealers that are clearly bad actors. What the f*** is that even? Yeah, who are these people? Because if you know how clearly if they're they bad acting... Do something. If, if somebody goes in and passes their forty four seventy three, yeah. they can't I like how it's in, I like how it's in only in the urban communities. Yeah, black black kids, they can't have guns. No 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 no, um, no 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 no. Hold on a second. This is not that. Urban communities they're they're saying gun dealers. We're not saying illegal gun dealers here. We're not talking about people illegally buying, stealing, however they're no, getting no, their they're hands saying, on guns. Yeah, they're saying, they're saying yeah. licensed if, if, dealers are Yeah, bad if you're actors. a licensed dealer in the hood You're a bad actor. Yeah, we gotta keep we gotta keep eyes on you, and we need a mechanism by where to watch you because we know you, you're the source of the problem, and the people in, in the hood are the source of the problem because they're buying guns from you so legally. You, you go to Chicago and you say, "Uh, hey man, can I buy some guns out the back door?" Yeah, yeah, meet me around back, no yeah. problem, buddy. That's cool. You think? Does anybody really? I, I no. guess there are people that really think that. Happens. No one goes up. I'm an FFL. I don't go up against going like spending federal <laughs> Listen, time. To, Listen to, to this know. language. Most federally licensed. So, so up above, we had all this very, very strong language of "you're a true American, you're you're a good-hearted person." Most federally licensed dealers are decent. That's all they call them: decent, law-abiding yeah. folks who share the goals of public. But safety. not the ones in the hood. Not those hood ones. <laughs> yeah. Significant evidence shows that there is a shockingly small percentage of dealers that are selling the overwhelming majority of guns used in crimes. And that they're doing so, uh, doing it knowingly and illegally. If they're doing it illegally, they're not a where's the uh, ATF firearms license. Yeah, where's the uh, ATF? Where, where's the ATF proving this? Of the illegal gun trafficking and sales that are disproportionately plaguing too many yeah. communities of. You know what color. we need? We need the ATF who allowed guns to go across the border to Mexico to get in here and go after these dudes in the hood. My, I think they have think gun stores. Be, I think this is going to be pe preaching the choir or whatever, but. Why are they asking for more laws when they're – this literally has laws on the books to – you can go after these people right now. Yeah. They're illegal. If somebody – if some FFL is illegally selling guns, you can go raid them right now. <laughs> what do yeah. you need, mean you if, need more if, laws? Um, if, if, um, if Pincus in his capacity as an undercover agent <laughs> is aware of what these folks are doing in the hood – yeah, he should do something about that, um, because if they're illegally selling guns to people that shouldn't have guns, for sure. This is what the... We've had these discussions, right, with Vince from the ATF, former ATF agent, about it. If you're doing this, the ATF should do their job and go, hey, you're illegally selling guns to people who shouldn't this, get them. But this, but why is it is why is it most of them are law-abiding, but over here you make a statement saying, oh, we know where this is, is an urban... Oh, what are you talking about? These, it's not, there's no me. there's no FFL holders in, in these urban communities using that... Uh, I'm not... Well, I shouldn't say none... But those people are doing that illegally, and it should be easy to figure that out and do something about it. This reminds me of uh, the last time here in Florida, uh, what was it, five years ago, we passed a hunting law allowing suppressors to hunt with. Mm -hmm. And the anti-suppressor people said that would be dangerous. There are going to be people out there illegally harvesting deer with their suppressors. And the argument has always been, ain't no way I'm going to wait eight to months to a year Plus eight hundred dollars, plus a two hundred dollar tax stamp to get my suppressor to go illegally harvest a deer. You're crazy. Yeah, the but same you, thing. You know who what? is going to pay their licensing fees, their business license, uh, for storefront costs? Go so through extensive background guns? checks and have Are your you serious give access. And and one of the things is, look, I'm not saying that people don't commit crimes, right? With FFLs, okay. There's obviously there's going to be a small percentage of people who do that. Um. These people are not restricted to urban areas. Just the other day in the news was uh, some people, I think there was a FFL in Indiana, I think, that was getting a sheriff to sign off letters, and then they were getting all these machine guns uh, imported or whatever, and, and the ATF and whoever else looked at it and was like, huh, 
this is some unusual activity with all these machine guns and stuff coming in. Just do your job. If if I don't I don't believe there's a reason for the ATF, but let's say this is it. Let's say we agree that that's it. Just do it. But you can't, for someone to put in a document here that they believe that this problem is solely coming from urban communities, that's really so it's dangerous. Like, it's like saying that the, the guns in Chicago are coming from Florida. Yeah, you've heard that one. It, there's a silk road of guns traveling illegally up to other states where they get used in crimes. That's some horror. The yeah. guns are getting stolen out of people's houses and getting used. Yeah. Policy. In short, we believe that the key, well, the last sentence, we believe this warrants at the very least an investment in further investigation and then a proportionate response from law enforcement. Policy. In yeah, short, good, thing, believe, good thing he's telling the ATF what their job should be. Yeah, in short, we believe the key to success here is establishing a messaging principle. Again, we need to control the narrative, consistent with everything mentioned above. Quote, quote, the greatest opportunity, and I don't know who they're quoting, the greatest opportunity for policy impact lies not in keeping certain guns from all people, but in keeping all guns from certain people. <laughs> people almost the above the urban and, people. And they, they have to put in parentheses, the people almost everyone yeah, how, already yeah. agrees should not have them. Why is this being said so often? Because they have no facts. Yes, absolutely. This is all yeah. an emotional play. As with other messaging recommendations, unlocking the potential of this one requires uh, this one requires political strategists strategists to think more about the near-term expediency it requires a disciplined messaging approach this is all about controlling this sounds and i'm sorry i keep going off on tangents but this sounds like an internal memo that got leaked this doesn't yes. sound like no something this sounds like a resume this sounds yes. like a job yes. pitch to the white house yeah, right. this is what i keep saying this sounds like a job let me pitch. be the guns are yeah to the white house successful policy change walk away beto o'rourke <laughs> exactly giving careful and strategic thought to which policies reinforce this message and which have the potential to undermine it. This means evaluating the viability of a policy proposal not only with the onus of demonstrating clear impact, but also through the lens of what they communicate to the responsible gun owners who overwhelmingly support the most impactful measures. We overwhelmingly support this. So yeah, this is definitely preaching up. This means viewing concerns about confiscation and slippery slope is legitimate. Uh, this is all double speak. <laughs> and going... And going yeah. to the greatest lengths possible to avoid policy proposals that can be used to legitimize those concerns. Yeah, then no. there's, a, there's a big right. section here on expanded background checks. I mean... Fortunately, the policy area with most uh, synergistic, God, I love this, message <laughs> is also the one that represents what we believe is the greatest potential for impact. Expanded background checks. Yeah, so this is very clear right here. Do we really have to read through this whole thing for people to get it? You know, I, I go ahead, go ahead, do it, do it, do it. The overwhelming majority of gun owners have already accepted, already accepted, that anyone engaged in the business of selling guns commercially should be required to conduct a background check. At the same time, the two of us uh, believe that many private transfers, such as gifting a gun to a family member or letting a fellow member of a gun club borrow your firearm, you have to be a member of a gun club, Borrow your firearm for a competition or a hunting event. What about uh, – or borrowing it so I can overthrow the government or protect from overthrow from the government. Uh, should be legal and remain a private transaction outside of government regulation. We believe any expansion of the background check requirement should be focused on transfers but to But they're stranger. leaving out – yeah, they're leaving out selling a gun to your neighbors that you know live – you know, and it, this is the, the they're trying to get away so from saying the, the this is the yeah, gun exactly. show. This is the gun show loophole that they're basically saying they believe should be closed. This is what they're talking about here. Um, we believe any expansion of the background check requirement should be refocused on transfers to strangers because that's dangerous. Selling something to someone, you know, very dangerous. Sure, there are some important details to work out around expectations, such as specific definitions of strangers and expectations that would make it impossible for the government to compile a comprehensive list of gun owners but we are confident they're very confident that there are solutions that can make a huge impact if we stick yeah. to the principles and message oh i hate i hate these words guns, <laughs> of only keeping guns from people we all agree shouldn't have them this is how to quote walk the walk in terms of demonstrating they're groovy they walk the walk. No, this is a uh, this is a key. Uh, Pincus has something to do with that whole walk the walk. In the talk terms of demonstrating so. that we are not trying to limit gun ownership amongst responsible gun owners, and how to give substance and true credibility to the claim that of respecting gun owners in the Second Amendment. 
I'm not, I don't even need to explain this to people. I don't know if I need to. If, you, if somebody out there needs me to explain this to them, I will. Any irony about expanded background checks is that they are perceived by many activists as being softer than an assault weapons ban, when in fact evidence shows they have far greater impact. Considering that, and the potential for uh, conversation about a ban of any kind to provide red meat for those who benefit from perpetrating or polarizing debate, God damn, they fill these sentences up too heavily. We believe the public face of any policy should, uh, policy push should, as entirely as possible, be focused on the background checks. The same caution goes for any measures like repealing the Second Amendment and postures of public protest against gun rights organizations. Those create easy opportunities for those with motivations other than our common good. Quote, well, uh, hi, um, italicized. Rather. No, yeah, it's finally... Finally, we believe an important part of the solution is a significant investment in an overarching, concerted, and sustained messaging campaign which contextualizes all of the above solutions. And any part that fits within the recommended common ground goals and messaging is part of a greater unifying effort that transforms a series of on-off initiatives. God, this is this is basically a far more powerful whole greater than the sum of its parts. This is basically give me a shit ton of money for the next 10 years. I'm going to cut gun deaths in half. Uh, please. And thank you, Mr. President Biden. Conclusion. Please. It's all psychobabble. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it, people should be worried. People should be concerned with the re-education claims that are in here. That's what they're talking about. We need to re-educate you. you. You're thinking wrong. You have bad thoughts. You want guns? You want to just sell your gun to a neighbor? That's dangerous. That's scary. Also, l let me tell you, these background checks are adding extra expense to something. You know, it's getting in the way of you being able. So they're saying, oh, we believe in you being able to sell it to your to your relative. But, you know, have one. yeah, but, you know, if there's folks that, you know, that are your friends, your neighbors, you've known them for a long time. You don't have the right to sell them this gun like you could sell them any other thing without going through a background check. I, you know what? I'll take it further. I don't give a fuck if you're my neighbor, my friend, or whomever that I'm selling to. I don't really give a rat's hairy ass. If you follow the legal requirements to own that mm -hmm. firearm, you give me cash, I give you gun. That's, yeah. that's all Ray I Ray Bozzolo said, who wrote this? Rob Pincus and Dan, what's the name of the guy from the uh, anti-gun uh, organization? Dan sucks. A, uh, they're going to put this up live. I can't say that. Dan yeah. Gross. Yeah, Dan Gross and Rob Pincus wrote this, if you want to know. At this conclusion... At this unique moment in history, there is a lot of well-intentioned rhetoric about empathy, overcoming divisiveness, and uniting our nation around our common good. No, there's not. We don't agree on you with you at all. Mm -hmm. We propose that there is no greater way to do that <laughs> than through the gun issue. <laughs> this bullshit! And that the time to do it is now. But to bring this opportunity to fruition, we must build from the foundation up, giving every bit as much thought to the messaging as to political strategy. Change is being made impossible by perceptions of a culture war that does not actually exist. Yes, it does. There is no group of Americans that doesn't care about safety, protecting our children. See, here it is. There is no group of Americans that doesn't care about safety, protecting our children, or respecting freedom. Yet, inaccurate characterizations persist that thwart the possibility of change. To have a truly uh, productive conversation, we must do the hard work and genuinely listen to each other. This sounds like Obama to me. Rather, rather than reflectively retreating to our uh, yeah, uh, ideological you'd have to say, corners. Rather than reflectively retreating to our ideological Ide corners. You got to do that. <laughs> ideological corners. <laughs> we must come together yeah. based on the common goals that truly unite us and reform our advocacy efforts into a whole greater than the sum of its parts. Than the sum uh, of its a new, parts. A, a new, new united, united voice. voice that results in the real change almost, ev almost everyone <sighs> Of us uh, except for those except for those people that we all know except for those people that we all, all know right. are terrible all right. except for you those ready? People. yeah this is this is it i'm gonna look directly at you rob pinkus that is for you and i hope this video goes live you can f yourself up your own ass <laughs> okay, i've done i've read the whole thing yes uh thank you for reading that um i hope you guys enjoyed uh uh reading with patrick reading with Babyface. this was the novel of i'm a f yeah Written and co-sponsored by uh, Rob Pinkins. Um, go ahead, paid. go ahead, go go ahead. Let's let. So now you've actually heard it, Richard Hughes, Patrick, and I read through this before. W what are your thoughts? 
It, and I, well, first off, it's crazy cycle babble. This is like IT white papers where you're trying to figure out what the company does, and they just say we do great things in big flowery words. There's not one fact, one statistic, one percent, one number count. How many deaths were there? How many were suicide? How many people killed themselves with a kitchen but knife? But there's a lot of key words, people... the people we all agree. Yes, yes. Yeah. But there was zero fact in that. How many, look, we, we all have, you know, Patrick and I, if you took all of our guns and knives, we still could pull our car in our garage and, and let it run. I could, you know, there, I could chuck myself up in that lathe again and it would chew me up real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the lathe control will be next. Pincus is dead to me. I, I mean, he was on the S list for a long time in, in my book, my personal book, um, just because stuff I've heard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I am I would never put my name on anything like that. I, I'm a GOA person. GOA's mm -hmm. got my back. So far. Yeah, there's a lot of... I, I have to tell you guys, this is a pitch. The only thing that keeps coming to mind, even reading this again is that this is a pitch to someone to sit on on a on some kind of committee from the White House on gun control and be the one reasonable pro gun guy sitting on that committee bringing to us unreasonable yes. how did he I'll, put it uh extremists uh I'll put it out there I'll put it out there you Rob Pincus is not the reasonable uh gun control our gun gun advocate that mm -hmm. he's portraying here so anybody that's listening to this oh I, I doubt anybody will ever hear this anyways but no, he, mm -hmm. he, he does not speak for us at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. I can almost guarantee he speaks for nobody in our chat. Hank can speak for himself, whoever else is here, but pretty sure mm -hmm. he don't speak for any of us. Just saying. No, well, and in this day and age, we can all speak for ourselves. Thank you very Easily. much. Easily. <laughs> you know, um, and, and here's a note that I wrote. Uh, well, I wrote two notes that I'm going to give to you guys. One, speak to me plainly, if you please. This is how God I would damn. like to be communicated with. Sure, I like to flourish and throw in some big words or whatever, but this was a lot of psychobabble, doublespeak nonsense so that things could be denied. Um, and then two, to me, this isn't a negotiation. It's terms of surrender. And yes. I don't it's agree exactly with that. Right. It's, it's, this is basically, to me, it feels like, one, it's a little scary that this is, again, feels like an internal memo that wasn't supposed to be leaked. That, that's odd. Um, but two, uh, it, it's either it, a job application or he's getting paid already by some group. Yeah, uh, but two, it's it's weird that it's like, it's almost like, well, this is what's going to happen, gun guys. You know, this is the this is you guys should be on board with this because this is you know the reasonable thing. You guys are just being crazy out there. No, and, and it's and like how many no. times are we reasonable? If yeah, let me tell you guys yeah. something. Obviously, there's things I can't divulge, but there's multiple sources that have been telling me for a while. That Pincus has been shopping around a lot of things like this document. This is not the only one. Doesn't this, does that surprise this, it? This is this not is alone. This is not something that was written in the last three days. This was probably not something that was written in the last three weeks. Right. This is right. something that takes. Yeah. There's no timeline on it. There, there's no. It just says recent. This is this is something that has been worked on a lot. I can guarantee you, every word has been read over a thousand times to make sure that the messaging is correct. You yeah. got to get that messaging right. This is written by a PR firm. This is written by people yes. who do PR. This, well, or someone trying to be PR or be a bridge. Or the gun. Yeah. Between uh, the gun community and the gun control guys. I'm, I'm going to ask. We've got 100 people watching us live right now. <laughs> Smash the thumbs up. So we're going to need it. I'm sure this message is probably going to get suppressed. We're going to probably, uh, people are going to try to deplatform us, do all kinds of craziness. Because we're having this conversation or, you know, just talking about this. Um. Kathleen Music Lover says, okay, I admit I wrote that for Pincus. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. <laughs> um, but please, uh, smash those thumbs money. up. Um, I think this is the point, and I think he's been trying to shop a lot of things like that to different organizations or get different people to sign on board of things. And I'm not sure what the success is, but what I would say to folks out there, um, you might want to carefully look over these things before you sign on to it. You might want to put your own messaging and your own uh, voice and opinions out there and not connect yourself to this. As I said in the beginning, I do understand why Amoland put this message out there and I get it. And, and, and I was mad and I'm still a little bit mad, but most of the anger I think goes for the person who writes this. And in a lot of ways, and I don't, I don't, I'm trying to avoid saying, bringing up the R word that gets a lot of people on edge, but this is very pointed 
in a specific direction and it pisses me off. Okay. Uh, racism. <laughs> oh, oh, there, there is that. Oh, yeah, there's an undertone in there urban. a little bit. Yeah, there's a strong, like, keep hitting that message there. And I'm not really sure exactly who it's pointed at. I know that um, on the on the liberal side, on the gun grabber side, they're willing to do this kind of stuff. I, if they, it, to, a, you know, they, they pretend not to be. Here? Sure. Uh, well, I guess it, it, it's probably not even a serious question because mm -hmm. I'm almost answering it myself. If you really say you went into Southside Chicago. Mm -hmm. You had a magic magic wand. You went into Southside to Chicago tomorrow, and boom, every gun gun was gone, and they couldn't get more. Do you really think they would stop killing each other over gang violence? Really? Like, do you actually think? That I think I think I think I think that problem of what's going on in Chicago, and it it's bigger. To do with firearms. It's bigger really? than it's bigger than black people or people of color. There's a yes. lot of money in crime. And in Chicago, yes. in New York City, in Miami, in a lot of places, there's big money. Look, in, in, in the small town that I live in, there's big money in crime, and there's people who are going after that money, and then they obviously get territorial over this money, right? I, I don't want sure. somebody coming after my turf. Of course not. Yeah. You know? Look, car, if, if, if there were no guns, guns on YouTube. <laughs> mm -hmm. If there were no guns, they would just run them over with their car. Mm -hmm. They would stab. They would. I mean, yeah. people. People are violent inherently, and, and it's not black people. I'm not saying black people are violent because mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody criminals will are violent. Let's just leave it at that. You're you're out there doing criminal activity. You've already kind of sold your soul to the idea that I'm a criminal. I'm a bad dude, or you know, gangster life sort of. Shit. Well, let's ask our, ourselves this question: oh, If there's things that are illegal, if illegal enterprises are bringing money. What can we do about it? If it's been illegal for a long time, we haven't solved the problem. We got lots of cops in in Chicago, in New York, and in, in in a lot of places in L.A. and in, in Miami. It's not solving any problem. What's the real way to solve this problem? There's not one simple answer. One, there's too many freaking laws. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. one. You know, and two, you have to allow people. You have to remove these laws and decriminalize things that have no right to be criminalized. And then you have to allow people to defend themselves against against these people, you know? That's what's going on. And crime's everywhere. There's, there's, there's poor white people living in neighborhoods yes. where they're suffering the same kind of inner city or urban crime or whatever, you know, you want to talk about, so. Yes. No, absolutely. I, I don't... It's not necessarily... And I'm not even going to say I don't think because it's not. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily the color of your skin. It has nothing to do with that. It's It's... A, a, a huge amount of other things, but, but again, nothing to do with a, the tool that's being used. But potentially here, when I hear people saying, you know, we all know who's doing it, I think of the FOAC situation that we talked about last week, where they were like, oh, we know. They said the same, they had very oh, similar yeah. wording. Almost the same of, language. Yeah, we yeah. know, we know who the people are who are getting these 80 percenters and doing stuff, and we should do something about it. And I then, just, then I, they put I cameras, they put cameras on the table of JSD Supply, and they were, they were filming black guys and following them out there and harassing those guys for buying 80 percenters, assuming that they're criminals. If this, you're a criminal, this, you break is, the law, then you get arrested. Crime. Yeah, this it's pre-crime. Pre -crime. This is pre-crime. You're assuming that he's going to go do something bad, and maybe he is. Maybe he's going to go turn those hundred, hundred guns that. First off, if that guy's buying a hundred ghost guns, quote, I shouldn't even use that word. That's bull that mm -hmm. guy's buying a hundred uh, palmetto um, pieces of plastic. Uh, P P eighties. If he's buying a hundred P eighties, that dude is rolling deep. Because I could not buy a hundred P eighties. That's a load of money. Mm -hmm. I I honestly don't believe anybody walked out of there with a hundred boxes. I just there's no way. There's just no way. Yeah, when um, someone yeah. actually becomes a criminal, then they are a criminal. Then you're you're arrested yeah. and you're tried and you're put through the court system. You yeah. are as <sighs> as um as uh, uh what is it Gunfud um uh Matthew Larossier right Gu Fudbusters as Fud Matthew Larossier Fudbuster said, it's not a crime for you to make your own firearm. It's not even a crime for you to sell that firearm if you make it. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not. It's when you intentionally, it's just like with taxes, okay? It's not a crime for you to go get a really good tax accountant, okay? And, you know, and, and mitigate the amount of taxes you pay. It's a crime when you avoid paying taxes. It's a crime when you, when you get into the business purposefully of manufacturing firearms and you evade going through what's set forth, you know, becoming an FFL, etc., 
right? The regulations that are set forth there, that's when it becomes a crime. And when people are actively engaging in that crime, not someone who buys it to make something for themselves, not someone who buys it, makes something for themselves, and at some point later goes, oh, you know what, I'll sell this, and this is the way for me to properly go about this, you know? This is the thing. We're not we're not really solving problems here. We're just looking busy and acting like we're solving problems and we're shifting blame over to people and this whole thing the the reoccurring uh themes in here are very very disturbing to me and it's what made me mad. Make sure to check out hankstrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.